ACC football kickoff, I'd like to take this opportunity to talk about a few topics and then leave time to answer as many of your questions as possible during the hour that we have. And specifically, I want to spend a few minutes recapping the past year, sharing some thoughts on our strategy and vision for the long-term future, and then looking ahead to the upcoming season. This past year has been a remarkable and I think even monumental one for the Atlantic Coast Conference. It's hard to believe the many milestones that have taken place since we were in this same room at this same event last July. On July 1st, we officially welcomed Pitt, Syracuse, and Notre Dame to the ACC family. This was a culmination of what began in September of 2011 when we announced Pitt and Syracuse would become full members of the ACC, bringing with them enormous qualities and characteristics, including current successes, as well as storied histories and traditions. Then in September of last year, many of you attended or watched as we introduced the University of Notre Dame as a full member in all conference sponsored sports with the exception of football, which will play five games annually against our league programs, as well as participate in our bowl partnerships beginning a year from now. As has been well documented, the relationship with Notre Dame, Pitt, and Syracuse further strengthens our league's long-standing commitment to balancing academics, athletics, and compliance integrity. Just two months after our Notre Dame announcement, we proudly introduced Louisville as the newest member of the ACC. With this aggressive approach to excellence in every respect, Louisville will be a great fit for the league, and we look forward to having them begin competition. Fast forward to late April, which was highlighted by the announcement that each of the current and future 15 member institutions had signed a grant of media rights. This act helped stabilize the landscape of college athletics, and just as importantly, publicly secured our position as one of the nation's premier conferences. I commend our institutional leadership for their thorough preparation, their swift efforts, their strategic wisdom, and their actions of solidarity and commitments, which has led us to where we are today as a conference. As we look to the future, we do so with great anticipation in this league. The composition of the long-term membership of the ACC has never been stronger. Geographically, we're moving toward moving forward as a true Atlantic Coast Conference with membership spanning the entire eastern seaboard and even into the Midwest with the addition of Notre Dame and ultimately Louisville. Within our footprint, the ACC will now have the most television households and the highest population of any conference footprint from a national standpoint. It is also projected that by 2030, 55% of the United States population will lie within the ACC footprint. And I think the combination of the quality of institutions and their athletic programs, our marketplace opportunities, and the population numbers, both current and projected, give the ACC enormous potential in both the near and distant future. As it relates to an ACC channel, we'll continue to strategically evaluate whether this makes sense for our conference and whether it makes sense for our television partner ESPN. We'll continue to have discussions with ESPN and focus on making sure ACC content continues to be available anytime, any place anywhere. From an athletic perspective, it's going to be exciting watching the competition both within the league and on the national stage. I'm going to talk more specifically about football momentarily, which I think has unlimited potential. But I think it's 
fair to say that this is the strongest collection of basketball programs that has ever been assembled in one conference. And our Olympic sports have consistently ranked second to none and will only get stronger with the addition of our newest members. Academically, and that's important in this league and to our institutions, the new membership only bolsters our league's credentials. In the most recent U.S. News and World Report's Best Colleges list, the ACC's 15 member institutions collectively rank first among the Power Five, Power Five conferences by all measures. In football specifically, I think it's important to note that our programs collectively have led all FBS conferences in APR each year that it has been calculated by the NCAA. And seven of the last years, last eight years, seven of the last eight years in graduation rates. And I think that's a tremendous credit to our institutions, our coaches, and uh, athletic directors as they focus on the academic side of things. Now let's talk a little bit about ACC football in the season ahead. We not only welcome Paul Crist of Pitt and Scott Schaefer of Syracuse to the ACC, but we have new coaches in Steve Adazio at Boston College and Dave Doran at NC State. Each one of these individuals joins an already excellent existing group of coaches that are focused with great anticipation on the first weekend of the 2013 season. As has been the case in recent years, we're extremely pleased that every ACC controlled football game will be available to our fans nationwide on one platform or another. Our relationship with ESPN allows us to truly maximize the platforms for every fan to see ACC football. From traditional television to progressive digital and mobile platforms like ESPN3 and Watch ESPN, ACC content is truly available everywhere. In addition to ESPN, the ACC network through Raycom continues to be broader than ever before with the reach of over 65 million households and no geographic parameters on the distribution. The ACC network also is now in every ACC bowl city, along with major markets that include New York, LA, Denver, New Orleans, Philadelphia, Seattle, Phoenix, Pittsburgh, Cleveland, and Indianapolis. The ACC app and the ACC vault continue to flourish while the ACC Digital Network has made monumental strides since launching in October of 2011. The 2013 ACC football schedule showcases some tremendous matchups as our league is playing the toughest non-conference schedule of any conference in college football. Our teams will play 11 games against non-conference opponents that finished last season ranked in the nation's top 25, and nine games against non-conference teams ranked in the final AP top 10. This also includes contests against each of the top four teams in the final USA Today poll. In total, our teams will play 56 games against 48 non-conference opponents which had a combined winning percentage of 56%, by far the highest of any of the Power Five conferences. We will also play nine non-conference games against six teams selected by ESPN.com in its early preseason top 10, including matchups with projected top-ranked Alabama, with Virginia Tech, fifth-ranked Oregon, with Virginia, sixth-ranked Georgia, both Clemson and Georgia Tech, 7th ranked Florida, both Miami and Florida State, 9th ranked Notre Dame, which Pitt will play, and 10th ranked South Carolina, through North Carolina and Clemson will both play. This year's opening weekend starts strong with ACC teams in actions throughout the weekend and culminates with our annual Labor Day matchup that will feature Florida State at Pitt in the Panthers' first Atlantic Coast Conference football game. Pitt competes in the ACC's Coastal Division, while Syracuse competes in the Atlantic. 
and Syracuse will play its first official ACC game against Clemson at the Carrier Dome in Syracuse on October the 5th. The 2013 schedule will also feature our, our normal five Thursday night games nationally televised by ESPN and three nationally televised Friday games by ESPN. Following the regular season, the, ACC, the, the Atlantic Division and Coastal Division champions will meet in the ninth annual Dr. Pepper ACC Football Championship game in Charlotte. This will be our fourth game uh, hosted at Bank of America Stadium in Charlotte. And of the previous three games, two of those three games have been sellouts. And Charlotte has just done a tremendous job of hosting our championship game. The winner, of course, of the ACC championship game will compete in either the BCS national championship game, and if not, it will play in the Discover Orange Bowl, which continues to be a terrific partner of ours.